Hey everyone, on this lesson we are going to solve the problem 11 on this section of problems. This problem 11 says, write a rule with the name of remove add that given four arguments. L is the list given. This rule removes the element at position K and we have two output variables. The first one is X. X is the element removed. And the second one is S, where S is the solution list, which is basically the list after removing this element. Here we can see a very simple example. We apply this rule with the list A, B, C, D, and we want to remove the element at position 3. So when we apply this rule and we do this carry, the solution is X equal to C, because C is the element that has been removed, and the solution list S is ABD, which is basically the same list as the original one, but removing the third element, which is C. As we can see, the rule is quite simple to understand. Let's jump now at the implementation of this rule. So we create a new prolog file. The name of this file can be any name, but you need to ensure that it ends with the extension PL. In our case, the file name is remove add. However, you can choose any name you want. What's important is that you maintain the extension PL, since it represents that this is a prolog file. Very well. Before we start coding this rule and implementing this predicate, let's start defining the idea behind this rule. So let's comment the specification of this rule. The name is remove add. As first argument, we have X, then we have L, we have K, then finally we have S. Remember that you can make comments in Prolog with the percent symbol. So let's describe the idea behind this rule. So as we can see, X is the element of the list L at position K. S is the list that remains when X is removed from this list L. So with this, we have this short specification of this rule. So before implementing the solution and considering the cases that we may have, it is very, very important to remember the notation that we can use in Prolog to represent lists. So in order to represent lists in Prolog, we can use the head two points or basically in here a pipe tail notation. So when we write the head and then the vertical bar and the tail in prolog, this basically means a list, okay, like so, let's just put it like that, where this is the first element of the list and this is the tail of the list, which is basically the remaining list. It is a sublist without the first element. So let's just consider that we have here L to be the list 5, 3, 2, 6. Okay, consider this list. So this list can be represented as 5, which is the head of the list, pipe, which is the vertical bar, and then the tail of the list, which is basically 3, 2, 6. So it is important to remember that tail is a list, head is an element. Right? This list and this list, um, they are equivalent lists. They are both the same list L. So very important to remind that when we write something like that, it means that X is the first element of the list and XS is the tail of the list, which is basically the remaining list. Very well, let's start the implementation of this rule. We will start with the base case. We always recommend students to start defining the rules with the base cases. So here, let's just think, what if the element that we want to remove, it is precisely the element at position 1. That is the first element, and so the head of the list. So just consider, imagine that we have this list, 7, 3, 5, 6, and we want to remove okay, the element 7. So in this case, when we apply the rule remove add, okay, x is the element at position that we want to remove, in this case the first one, the list that we have is basically x, Excess, like so. Keep in mind that since the element that we want to remove is X, 
and the x is the element at position 1, then the head of the list also needs to be x. So in this case, what is going to be the solution? Okay, this list s, well, basically this one. Okay, the list 3, 5, 6. And what is this? Well, this is precisely the tail of the list. So if we want to remove the element at position 1, then the solution list is basically the tail of the list, right? And we are the final point since this is a rule and a fact in Prolog. So this is the base case. Let's just comment base case. Okay, we want to remove the first element. Now let's study the recursive case. That is, what if the element that we want to remove is not at this position 1? So in this case, given the element x at this position that we want to remove, and since we know that on this case this element is not the position 1, right, since it is not at position 1, the first element of the original list is not going to be x, it's going to be another element, let's just say y, and this is the tail of the original list. Now k is a value that is not 1, right, and then what can we say about the solution list, okay? Well, what we can say, well, we know for sure that the element, okay, of this list, we know that y is going to belong to this list, because y is an element that we will not remove. So, since this element will not be removed, we will include it on the solution list. What we know is that the tail of this solution list is not going to be the same as the original one, okay? There is some element inside this list that we will remove. So as we have said, this is the recursive call, and in here, this is the head of the rule, and now we will define the body of the rule. So first of all, we need to verify that k is greater than 1, okay? There is a way to ensure that k will never be 1 at this point without using the k greater than 1. This is one way of doing things. However, remember that there is a very important and powerful concept in Prolog that is the cut operator. In Prolog, when you write the exclamation symbol, this means the cut operator. Okay? This means that if we arrive to this cut operator, then we will not continue to go to the bottom. So basically, on this base case, if we do not want to use this condition, okay, if we want to remove it, we can basically come here and say, if we come to this clause, if we come to this predicate, we will use the cut operator. So with this, we ensure that if k is equal to 1, then basically we will not jump to here. We will just maintain ourselves here and we will finish this call. However, for this lesson, we will first give the solution without the cut operator. Okay. And then at the end, we will also extend this with the cut operator. So if we don't use the cut operator, we just come here and we verify that k is greater than 1. If this happens, then we can proceed. So now the behavior of this recursive case is the following. Imagine you want to remove the element at position 3. So it is basically 1. So initially, the value k is going to be three and then what you will do is you will call again the same rule in a recursive way but now instead of calling this rule with this list you will call this same rule remove that okay with the same arguments but now the list that you're going to choose is the sub list so six one eight and you will decrement the value k in one so instead of three we will have two and this is the solution let's just call it S1, okay? This solution is going to be changing over and over. In fact, S is basically the concatenation of all the recursive calls of this. So, is K equal to 1? No, it is not. So, we again come here and we apply the same rule, remove that. But now, with the list, as we can see, 1, 8. So, we take the sublist of this list. And we decrement again in 1 the value of k. So we have 1 and this is S2. So when we arrive to this case where k is 1, then we will have a base case and we will basically return 
the solution list to be excess. So S2 in here is basically excess. And in this case, excess on this list is 8. Okay, 8 is the sublist, which is basically the same list as this one without the first element that is 1. So S2 we can see here that is 8. S1 is going to be the concatenation of 6 and 8. So we will have S1 to be 6, 8. And finally, the, the final solution S is going to be the concatenation of all, which is basically in here, we can see S to be 5, 6, 8. So we have successfully removed the element 1, right? And this is the behavior of this recursive case. So let's do this. Let's decrement the value of K. Okay, so here let's just, this was an example to understand this definition. So now we basically decrement the value of k. So k is k minus 1. We define a new variable k1, right? Like so. And now finally we apply again the same recursive call to this rule with the same x. But now we take the sublist instead of taking the whole list. We take the tail of the list. So we just take excess in the same way as we have explained. Uh, on this next recursive call, we always take the sublist. So in this case, we have this list. And on the next one, we have the tail. And on the next one, we have the tail and so on. So we always take the tail of the original list. Then we have here that now the value is no longer k, but k1, which is basically k minus 1. Right. And the final solution is going to be a ys which is basically the sublist, as we have been seeing here, of all of these lists. So we add the final point. We can remove this example. And here we have the solution of this rule very well. So let's verify that this solution is working right. As we have explained previously on the course, we open the console. If we are using Linux or any Unix system, we open the problem interpreter and we write and move ourselves to the same path where we have the prolog file saved and we write between square brackets the name of the file in our case the name is remove that so here we have remove that and then we just use here a final point remember to write the name of the file without the extension so we press enter and as we can see we have true so we have no problems loading the file. If you're using Windows, which is our case, we just open the Prolog interpreter in the same way we load the file in this way. So we can verify that this program is working and we will start with the example. So here we apply the remove add rule. X is the element that we remove on the list A, B, C, D, right? We want to remove the element at position 3. So here the element is 3 and the solution list is S. So this shall give us that X is equal to C and S is the list A, B, D. So here we press enter. We can try with more examples. So let's just scroll this down. Do not see previous executions. So for instance, let's apply the remove add rule, right? X is the element that we want to remove. The list is the list 8, 1, 9, 5. And we want to remove the element at position 2, for instance. And the solution list is just say to be M. You can write here any uh, variable name that you prefer. So we press enter and as we can see, the element position 2 is 1. So X is 1 and the final list is A, 9, 7. So the program works right now this solution is right and it works with any example that you can think of now it is very important to point out the importance of the cut operator in the efficiency of the program for instance instead of always checking if the k is greater than one and if this is false then we just leave this we can just remove this and we use the cut operator that we already explained previously in the course 
that basically says, okay, if k is equal to 1, so if this is true, if this is met, then we will leave everything that we have below and we will not jump to the clauses that we have below. So this is very important. With this, we gain efficiency. We can load again the same file, remove that with final point at the end. And you can see with the same examples that we have precisely the same solutions. But in addition, we have a more efficient implementation. So with this, we end the solution to this problem 11. We remind the student that you can check and download the solution as well as the problem statement on the downloadable documents of this lesson. See you on the next lesson.